This video is going to be about the assumptions of simple linear regression. I'm going to start like I did for assumptions and analysis of variance by reminding you that assumptions is the statistician's word to say, what are the statements that define ideal data? Ideal data for the simple linear regression model. So our assumptions here are going to be characteristics, statements about what ideal data look like for the simple linear regression model. And I think the easiest way to understand the assumptions about what ideal data look like is to visualize them. So I'll start off this video by drawing us some pretty pictures. And then I'm gonna draw us some more pictures. I'm gonna draw us two plots that will help us check the assumptions. So that is we can build extra code that helps us determine whether or not the assumptions of simple linear regression are satisfactorily met. So I'm going to introduce um, two plots based on two new variables that um, you probably haven't thought of yet in the world of simple linear regression. Well, maybe one of them you have. And then with those two new variables, we will talk about the plots you can use to check the assumptions. That seems more proper. And then we will go into R and do a quick example. So I'm going to start by drawing us a pretty picture. So in the world of simple linear regression, we theoretically have data, something like that, between a numeric explanatory variable and a numeric response variable. First off, right off the bat, assumption one, linearity. If your data are not linear, you should not fit a line through them. There are more sophisticated methods for which you can fit a curve through curvy data, but you should only fit a line through linear data. Now, a lot of even like junior stats majors will say, I want to learn something more sophisticated than linear regression. But I promise you, linear regression is taught early on because it is routinely one of the most important models in the world of statistics. It seems boring because it's just a line and you want some fancy, fun, curvy thing. But linearity is a crucial model. Uh, linear models are crucial in the world of statistics. So just bear with me for, through linear stuff. It's really important. Just as a quick example, if you have data that look like this, well, you should not fit a line through it because look at all the data you're missing. So that is bad. You need linearity in your data as the first and most important assumption of linear regression. So the plot I'm showing you here is appropriate because the data look linear and a line through the data seems to fit well. The second one is independence. We don't want any two observations to be inherently related to each other in some sort of meaningful way. We really want this to be a completely independent, a completely randomly sampled data set. No two observations are like siblings or best buddies or people working at the same company or even um, cell lines from the same genome whatever, or um, in some sense, you even want to make sure if you're working in a lab that like you're not contaminating different vials with fluids from another vial. You want your individual vials to be individual copies of whatever process it is that you're measuring. Okay, three. Oh, so I guess I should say for independence, that's not, nothing you can really visualize. You just kind of have to think about how the data were collected. Third one is normality. And here's the pretty picture that I'm going to draw for you. What we're essentially saying is at all values along the x-axis, we are going to suppose 
that whatever we might predict on the y-axis at that particular value of x defines for us a normal distribution. And in fact, at all places along the x-axis, we are going to define a normal distribution that is centered at that particular value on the y-axis. At all values along the x-axis, we're going to assume there's a normal distribution that is centered basically right there on the y-axis. So we're assuming the response variable are normal, the res response variables are normal, but there's like a new normal distribution at each value along the x-axis. So it's almost like this line of ever-creasing normal distributions along this along the x-axis. But really what that's telling us is if we observe a bunch of data at this value of x, they should all fall relatively close to the line. We don't want any observations way out here that might indicate heavy right skew. We don't want any observations way down here that might indicate heavy left skew. What we want are observations basically well centered about the line of interest. Our fourth assumption is same variance at all values along the x-axis. So that is, if this first normal distribution has variance, uh, standard deviation sigma, and this second normal distribution has standard deviation sigma, and then this third normal distribution has standard deviation sigma, no matter where you are along the x-axis, the appropriate normal distribution defined at that point has the same variation sigma for whatever value that sigma could be. So these are your assumptions for simple linear regression. There's four of them. Three of them are nearly identical to the assumptions for analysis of variance. So if you memorize the ones for analysis of variance, there's really just one more for simple linear regression. And let's be honest, it shows up in the name of the method. It's simple linearity regression. <laughs> okay, that should help you remember. <laughs> okay, let's move on to some other pictures. So that was my attempt to help you visualize the assumptions of linear regression. Next, I'm going to introduce two, really two variables that are going to define for us two plots that help us check these assumptions. So we will start by drawing a similar picture as before, but this time I'm going to emphasize different things. So we've got some numerical explanatory variable and some numerical response variable, and we have a bunch of observations that all meet the definitions of interest. The extra quantities I'm going to define are as follows. See this observation here? I'll just circle it a bunch to emphasize it. Let's start with that observation defined at something like the first observation x in our data set. Well, at the first observation x in our data set, that kind of corresponds to y1 on the y-axis. What we're really interested in is the distance between the observation itself and whatever we predict based on the line fit through the data. That difference right there between the observation, the point, and the value corresponding to that point on the line is called a residual. Because it's associated with the first observation, maybe we'll call it residual one. And in fact, each new observation has a corresponding residual. Sometimes the residuals are below the line that we fit through the data. Sometimes the, I mean, sometimes the observations are below the line we fit through the data, and sometimes the observations are above. It doesn't matter as far as the residual is concerned, as long as we just keep track of all the residuals of interest, then we will have the first quantity I'm interested in defining here. Residual. The difference between the observed value, that is the point, and the line. 
So each observation in our data set has a, a residual after we fit the line through it. We can just calculate that difference. In fact, we'll just ask R to calculate that difference for us. Okay, so all of the dots have corresponding observations on the x-axis and corresponding observations on the y-axis. But moreover, for a particular value on the x-axis, there is a predicted value on the y-axis. And that is the same sort of thing for all the values on the y-axis. Whoops, look, I made a typo early. Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Nope. I didn't make a typo. So we see for x1, based on the line we have fit through the data, we predict y hat 1. But we actually observed y1. So that difference is the residual, but also the predictions y hat are of interest to us. These are the predicted values at some value of x. And sometimes they call them predicted values. In the world of R, they're called fitted values because they are like the values fitted to the model. Yeah, it's kind of weird language, but that's the way it goes. So these are the two quantities of interest for us. Residuals, that is the difference between what we observed, y, and what we predict, y hat, and the fitted values, y hat. However many observations we have in our data set is the same number of fitted values we have. And however many observations we have in our data set is the same number of residuals we have. So residuals and fitted values define for us new vectors of data. Because they're new vectors of data, we can make plots with them. So let's start with the easy plot. I'll give you an example of what a good plot of just the residuals looks like. Because the residuals are one numeric vector, an appropriate plot for one numeric vector is a density plot. And as long as the density plot of the residuals looks approximately normal, then the assumption of normality is satisfied. So that's in my good column. But then there's also some bad columns. But what I'm telling you with the good side of this is that plotting a density plot of the residuals helps ensure normality. So basically, any plot of the residuals that doesn't appear normal is breaking the assumption of normality. So let's just recap some non-normal distributions. That distribution is non-normal. That distribution is non-normal. That distribution is non-normal. All of these break normality because the density plot of residuals is not normal. So great, we can check normality from a density plot of residuals. You all know how to make a density plot. That one shouldn't be too bad. Save the best for last here. Let's do the same thing again, good. And then we'll have a bad column. So here is a funny plot. We are going to put residuals on the y-axis and y-hat on the x-axis. Tricky. Good looks like this. And it's going to be easier to explain why this is good when I show you some examples of bad. But essentially, this good plot satisfies linearity and same variance. It satisfies linearity because this is like a flat line. It's almost as if there's no relationship between residuals and y hat. Because it's a flat bar of observations, there's no obvious relationship between the residuals and y hat. That satisfies linearity. Because that bar is the same height all the way across the values of y hat, the height of the bar does not change. That satisfies same variance. Okay, let's see some bad examples. So here we go. 
So we could break linearity if this bar of observations had some sort of positive or negative slope. That would break our assumption of linearity. I'm going to draw the residuals having a negative slope across y hat, but if it had a positive slope, it would break linearity just the same. If there was any kind of curvature, no matter what the curvature looked like, that would break the assumption of linearity. So looking back at the good plot, what we see is just a flat bar that shows no relationship between residuals and y hat satisfies linearity. Anytime there's a relationship between y hat and the residuals, it breaks linearity. Okay, let's look at two more plots. Anytime there's non-constant height to the points, so in this case, I'm drawing like a megaphone that's kind of expanding to the right, which means there is non-constant height in these residuals relative to the fitted values. Same sort of thing, but going in the opposite direction, right? These two break same variance. I know this seems like a lot for such a simple model, but I promise you, these two plots that we're creating, residuals on y hat and separately density plots of the residuals, are used for most of the rest of the models we're going to look at in this class, which means these plots are going to show up again. And even though in the future the models will be more complex, these plots will stay the same. I'm kind of laying foundation here for future models in this class. Okay, so here we are in R. We're continuing with this Elmhurst College data set where we're trying to predict gift aid using the explanatory variable family income. We fit our simple linear line through the plot. We fit it ourselves by hand. We've looked at some output for hypothesis tests. We've looked at some output for confidence intervals. Really what we should have done first, but it's the most complex topic, so I saved it for last, is check if our model has fit the data well. In order to check that our model has fit the data well, we're going to create two vectors. One vector y hat, that's all the predicted values from the line itself. And the other one is residual uh, residuals. And I encourage you to use the non-intuitively named function R standard for the residuals. If you knew what R standard was doing, I haven't fully explained it to us, uh, it would make a lot of sense. But suffice it to say, R stands for residuals and standard is doing a standardization procedure, much like we do for our test statistics, where we take all our observations and we divide by the standard error sort of thing. I'm going to put these two vectors in a data frame, DFA, A for assumptions. Now remember, when you're creating a data frame, this is a name you choose. I am choosing to name the column with the data from the vector R. I'm choosing to name that column inside the data frame, resid. So this is a little bit more confusing than you want it to be. I'm going to name the column y hat, and in that column, I'm going to put the data from y hat. But you'll get over it in due time. So the first one we should make is, remember, you chose the name resid, so that's what you have to reference here, is the density plot to check normality. You all tell me, does that density plot look normal? Yeah, it certainly does. So the Assumption of normality is appropriately met. Let's check our next plot. So let's see, on the x-axis, we're going to put y hat. And on the y-axis, we're going to put the residuals. That's a little tricky, but that's why I set it all over again to help you remember. And now here's the real issue with live real-world data. Real-world data is messy. 
it is not nearly as clean as the pictures I just drew you. So what I've done here is shown you an example of the assumptions, linearity, and same variance, where they are both satisfied well. This is a plot where it's essentially just a bar, a constant bar of data with no obvious relationship in the like direction of these data. It's almost like there's a little bit of positive directionality here, but these guys kind of crush all of that positive directionality and make it so that really there's not much shape to these data at all. And that is really what we wanted for both linearity and same variance is just kind of like a flat bar of data with no obvious relationship between the residuals and y hat. So there's four inherent assumptions to linear regression. Three of them are the same for analysis of variance. Independence, normality, same variance. You can check normality for simple linear regression with this plot. You can check same variance and linearity with this plot. The only one you can't check out of this is independence. And for that, you just kind of have to think about how your data were collected.